Good afternoon and welcome to Across the Pitch. We're the soccer show for people who think Millwall is a friend of Bart Simpson. <laughs> now, of course, Mill House is Bart Simpson's friend, while on the other hand, Millwall is an EFL championship football team. They currently rank 20th in the championship just four points above the relegation zone. So Millwall, uh, they're in for a fight over their last 12 games to try and stay up in the championship. For tonight's show, or actually today's show, we do have a very special guest for you. Today's show is the first in our special Sunday Conversation series. My name is Phil Kennedy. Unexpectedly, Aaron Ayers and Matt Robards were unable to join me today. However, I was still able to sit down with Darren Woodhead, who is the author of the upcoming book, 50 Years of Accrington Stanley, 50 Years at the Crown Grounds, due out in July. So let's just jump into that conversation and, and get Darren on the phone now. Good evening and welcome to a special Sunday conversation edition of Across the Pitch. Today we're sitting down with Darren Woodhead, author of the 50 Years at the Crown Ground book about Accrington Stanley and their last 50 years of history at the Crown Ground which of course is known as the Wham Stadium. We're going to sit down with Darren today and we're going to talk about all things Accrington Stanley, a little bit about the history, a little bit about what's going on with the team today. Welcome to the show, Darren. Thank you, Phil. Nice to speak to you finally. Yes, I've, yes. Yeah, I've been enjoying the podcasts so far, uh, particularly the ones with Scott Brown from across the well, pitch. Fantastic. So I've, uh, yeah, I've really enjoyed them. They've been great. Well, we're glad that you're enjoying the show, and, and definitely we've enjoyed having Scott on. He, he's just a great guy, and it's so much fun to talk to. And now, you know, we we love watching him, and you know, everybody over at Accrington, you know, really like what you guys are doing over there. So uh, I had a chance to watch that game against South and yesterday on a stream over here but i i'm imagining you probably went to it yeah i went to the game yesterday we didn't play at our best to be quite honest it was a bit of a, a dour draw but there were two major incidents obviously uh when south end scored resulted in two people leaving the pitch from one from each team and then we scored a fantastic goal Dan Barlez has scored a, a great equaliser, but as a, as a match in general, it wasn't overly impressive, but it's another point towards our target and to consolidate in League One. We'll take what we can. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Every point is big. That's uh, another point above the, the relegation zone. And, of yeah. course, this is your guys' first year in League One, so I, I know that the biggest goal for the team is to stay there and you know, eventually continue progressing up to the levels and, and look towards the championship. And certainly that was a, a rough way to give up a goal yesterday because not only did you give up a goal, but... Uh, as Scott put it uh, to me when I talked to him after the game, Johnny Maxted got his head glued a little bit in that one. And... <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was a it was a nasty one. Uh, yeah, they they all got a bit in a little bit of a tangle, and yeah, it looked painful from every angle. Oh yeah, I saw it. It looked painful on TV. Yeah. You know, five thousand yeah. miles away. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was a good point, and, and like you said, there was that fantastic goal by Barlasser. And tell us a little bit about Paul Smith. I know he's come in and, and really made some noise. Yeah, he's, uh, he might be exaggerating to say, but I think he's transformed our season. He's only played three or four games, but he's been fantastic. He's he's quick, you know, he's he's moving defenders or he's a nightmare for defenders he's pulling you know making space for other players and he's not getting the goals yet but he's having a real impact on games well yeah he he really seems to be a creator to me and i know that you guys got off to a pretty strong start to the season and then as the uh, the new year came around you guys had a bit of a goal drought and have snapped out of that ever since he came along and uh, you know i think that, that a lot of it has to do with he's opening up other chances for guys like Billy Key and Sean McConville and your finishers. Exactly, you're dead right there. Yeah, that's exactly what he's doing. He's uh, running the channels and making space for other players. 
I mean, yeah, he's had a real good impact on the team. Yeah, absolutely. We've talked a little bit about what's going on now, but I know that uh, on Twitter, you describe yourself as a keen team historian. Yeah. And the book that you're working on and that that we're here to talk about, of course, is about the history of Accrington. So start off by telling us a little bit about the book and, and your inspiration for starting it. Right. Well, I've been collecting information and writing about the club now for many years what led me into it i can't exactly say it's just been uh it just kept coming along bit by bit and this is a third book i've had a break from writing the previous book i think it's 13 years since the, the last one came out okay. but in the meantime i've been working on other projects i've been i've written articles for magazines uh, match day program i've got the uh, accrington stanley memories website on facebook and so on twitter so it's uh it's just generally been a bit of a history buff about accrington stanley really that's just fantastic and, and you're uh you mentioned your facebook group accrington stanley memories i'm a member of that and yeah. like i posted on on our facebook page yesterday if if you have any interest in accrington stanley at all Darren's group is an absolute must follow because not only do you get the history, get things like uh, the great goal that we showed you yesterday, that video, the goal that we just spoke about earlier. So on on Twitter, uh, you can be found, your Twitter handle is at Memories Stanley, and in the group on Facebook is called Accrington Stanley Memories, correct? Yeah, that's correct. In, In particular, the one on Facebook is really evolved from well humble beginnings i thought it'd be a, a few of us guys who are interested in the history of the club i thought maybe 50 or 100 people might be on eventually but it's it's really grown we've got ex-players you know loads of supporters from the uk and around the world yeah we've got the historic stuff and the people post videos of the match day and it's just a general place to stanley fans to come and have a chat and discuss all things stanley old and new really I love it. I I look at it at least once a day and see what's going on in there. And and like you said, it's all things Stanley. And if you want to find out what's going on with the team, that's the place to go. And then, like you said, you have folks in there that will post their pictures like, hey, I just found my program from 1975. And it's just just so great. Yeah, I mean, I think there's approaching 1,400 members now is amazing for the three years we've been in operation and three and of you us said are, you have members in 55 countries is it now? yeah 55 just turned into 56 actually yesterday because a young guy from malaysia joined us so that's 56 countries now on board which is it's brilliant i don't i don't understand it totally why accrington is uh, i don't know if it's something to do with fifa and since we've been on there and it's just it's it's phenomenal really how many people are interested in I can actually kind of answer that question from my perspective, of course, being somebody from, you know, Arizona of all places. Yeah, yeah, it's an an unlikely combination, Phil. (laughs) You know, what it really comes down to is uh, if you're the kind of person that has an interest in the teams beyond the Premier League and getting into the the Championship League, One League Two, even some of the non-league teams, and you start learning about that, the history of the teams. Mm. I think that Accrington Stanley, not only just your history, but your presence, it's just, it's such an amazing and interesting history. The fact that it, it really dates all the way back to Accrington and had one of the original teams back in uh, 1888 and that the whole the team that would never die as it says yep. on your website and of course the the whole story with andy holt coming along and yeah he's just a riot to follow on twitter he <laughs> oh, he's, uh, he's entertaining yes <laughs> yeah, he's, yeah as far as andy holt is concerned you know when a when a new owner does get involved with your club you can be skeptical of, the, of you know the uh, their interests of why they want to get involved and and you do 
you know, you're hesitant in, in thinking, are they going to be good for our club? As far as Andy Holt's concerned, he's he hasn't put a foot wrong since he walked into the place. He's been absolutely fantastic for Accrington Stanley. He's getting kids involved. He's put his business sense around the club. He hasn't just thrown money at it in a silly way. He's doing it in a structured way, ground improvements. And while he's at the helm, you just feel like we're just heading in the right direction. To what extent, how far we can go, who knows. But if we keep going in the right direction, great. I think that that a a great point that can be made is we're recording right now while the Carabao Cup final game between Chelsea and and Manchester City is going on. And if you look at the, the sanctions against Chelsea and their ownership group and Manchester City, and of course, they have their own questions. And then you see a, a guy like Andy Holt is just a polar opposite. And I look at what's right with football and what's wrong with football and at Accrington Stanley is definitely one of the things that's what's right with football and that's one of the things that drew me to the team. Yeah, that I I gotta agree there, Phil. I mean sometimes now with Premier League football, although I do watch it when it's on TV, I don't have any affinity with it compared to twenty, thirty years ago, what was the original Premier League and the, the old first division. I, you know, I grew up on it, I idolised the players and to me now I I I'm, I feel myself growing more and more distant from that. It just seems another world altogether. Whereas at Accrington, you know, you're you you're close to the players, the pitch. Everything's a good, you know. It's a nice family environment. Uh, when we got promoted last season, it, you know, the, you, you're celebrating with the players. They all uh, congregate with you in the in the bar after the game, and it, it's just a, a really good atmosphere. Oh yes, ab- absolutely. And here in Phoenix, uh, Arizona, which is where I'm at, we have the Phoenix Rising, who are our USL team. Yeah. And with our team here, it's very much the same community type atmosphere. Where you know, like you said, I mean, ju- just last night I was on Twitter, and, and Adam John, who's our new striker, is, is on Twitter asking me, you know, hey, where can I go watch the Arsenal game in the morning? Yeah. Not like it's, any Arsenal player is. Getting to be talking with me on Twitter. No, you know? exactly, yeah. yeah. And I've noticed you've got, I, I did a little bit of a look, and you've got uh, quite a few nationalities in your squad, or roster as you call it, haven't you? So yes, absolutely. We've got guys from all across the globe. James yeah. Busa uh, is a guy who spent some time in England. I, I know he played for QPR. I think he was at the Fulham Academy. He might be a guy that uh, that you heard over there at one yep. point. Of course, uh, Solomon Asante, he's played internationally for Ghana. A little bit like my Akin to Stanley Memories page, multinational. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you did mention that you'd written a couple of other books before this one about Stanley. Tell tell us a little bit about those. Right, the first one was called The Long Road Back, and that was in two thousand and two. That was basically how the club had come back from going bankrupt in in the nineteen sixties. In nineteen sixty two, the the previous club and how a, a new team had been resurrected. Well, we're still in non league by that point that was 2002 and then I did another one in 2006 called Accrington Stanley the complete A to Z that was basically a a combination of both the old and the new clubs and little bits and pieces about all of them statistics and photographs and and, and things like that so it's been 13 years I've been (laughs) plotting this one uh, and (laughs) collecting information and uh, a big time that that was that was around the time when you you guys made up to League Two and around the time that Andy Holt took over, correct? It's well, it was the first point is correct. It was when we got into the the football league, but Andy Holt came along quite a bit later than that. Andy Holt uh, has been involved for the last probably three four years. Oh, okay, yeah. Probably thinking this is maybe the the last book I'll ever do, but you never know. <laughs> <laughs> we hope that that you keep coming out with them, mm. and and I've already ordered my copy, and I can't wait to get my hands on it. And are we still able to get your old books at all? Or uh, they're currently out of print. <laughs> you might be lucky on eBay now and again. They do, I'll they do, they do come up, yeah, <laughs> but they, yeah, they're not actually available to buy uh, anymore. 
Your group is called Accrington Stanley Memories, and of course, your your books are all about the team's history. Tell us, what, what are some of your favorite Accrington Stanley memories? Do you have any favorite players from your childhood, favorite seasons, anything like that? Uh, yeah, I mean, probably the last 20 years. It's, what, 19 years since John Coleman and Jimmy Bell took over. Uh, when they first came to the club. It, it's just been success all the way, really. We've had four promotions. It's difficult to pinpoint individual games. There's just been so many of them. I mean, we beat Burnley in the in the Cup. You know, many go- other recent performances with promotions. One game that does stick out in my mind is the actual first season that John and Jimmy were involved with the club. We played a team called Radcliffe Borough. <laughs> I don't expect that you'll have heard of them, but we had to win to keep our promotion hopes alive. John and Jimmy were still playing then. They were player and assistant player manager. We were 2 0 down at half time, meaning that promotion was out of the question. And we actually won 3 2. And in a way that just started the whole ball rolling of all this success for me. It's a it's a single moment where if we'd have lost that game who knows if they maybe you know we were chopping and changing managers at a regular you know occurrence then maybe they wouldn't have survived who knows so real pivotal moment in Accrington's history to me that one wow when you hear about that there there are just those like you said the pivotal moments in history when you look back and you say this is the moment this is the game that the things changed for us and now you told me something extremely interesting there that i want to go back to is i did not know that john coleman actually played for the team also he did yeah when they arrived in 1999 John was uh, coming to the end of his career. He'd, he'd been a player manager at Ashton, another non-league team. John and Jimmy Bell were both playing uh, for that first season. John Coleman actually scored in many crucial games right at uh, the end of the season to get promoted. Yeah, I think if you look on memories on the memories page, there's a few clips if you troll through it of uh, John Coleman scoring one or two goals for us. Yeah, I'll have to take a look yeah. at that. Cause that. That was something I did not know that, yeah. that he played for the team. There. Yeah, it was a player manager he came as, yeah. These are the stories that, that just make the whole story of Accrington and just, you know, the, the whole story of lower league, non-league football so interesting. It's that it's not about the money like we were talking about earlier mm. where the Premier League is, is all about the money. When, when you have things like player managers or, or guys that maybe have to go out and, and get a job during the off season, you know, that's what it's about, the love of the game. Yeah, well, I mean, John Coleman was a he was a school teacher managing us and playing part time. So that's where we were at at that particular time. It, it's uh, it's absolutely unbelievable how far we've come as a club. Wow! Now you're you're playing Derby County at the FA yeah. Cup. Yeah. And- yeah, <laughs> going to the Stadium of Light. Yeah, and just to be <laughs> playing. Yeah, all these teams that we're playing, I just have to pinch myself every every week. The the teams who 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 are coming to our ground, it's it's amazing. Yeah, it's it's tremendous. Just regarding players, we touched on players who you know favorite players, etc. Yeah, uh, I've got so many, but, but it's difficult because I've got to know quite a few of them as well. But you know, I can. There's a few I can roll off the top of my head. There are a couple of guys called. Uh, there was Chris Grimshaw and Paul Beck when we were back in the 1990s. Who were real local heroes, really. They played many games. Paul Mullen and Lutel James. Who, you know, they were fantastic players. Let me ask you this. Who was your first favorite player when you were a kid? Who was the guy that, that you wanted to be when, when you were out on the playground? Who who was that? I mean, probably around that era, it would be, even though he's not too much older than me, it would be Chris Grimshaw. Uh, he, he was a, a legend in Accrington. He was a winger. He was, you know, he, he, he was just a match winner for us on numerous occasions. Played over 300 games for the club. Wow. Fantastic. There was another guy who, this is one of the, the saddest parts of this book, actually, is uh, a guy called David Argreaves. Sadly, passed away last year, and he was a member on Accrington Stanley Memories, and he scored 300 goals for Accrington. 300? 300. Now, if you can 300? find... 300? 
if you can find a, a player who scored 300 goals for one club anywhere, <laughs> it, it's quite amazing. You're going to have to sit there all night looking through Google. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> now, so he was a local player, a, a really nice guy, and sadly he passed away last year. So as part of this book, there's a you can imagine if he got 300 goals, he's going to be a big part of this book. And he was a lovely guy as well, and he was very interested in the club afterwards. And so I've, I've dedicated one full page to him in the book as well. So we're, we're going to do, go with that. Well, that's fantastic. 300 goals. Yeah, that is... he was, uh, he's David Hargreaves, he was called. Nickname Haggis. That was his nickname. And uh, he was a legend at Accrington throughout the 70s and 80s. Rest but even it. even today's players, though, I mean, Billy Key fits into the into the category of legends, even though he's still playing. He's you know he's, he epitomises to me what what the club are about. He's our star man. He's our best player. But he's a really down to earth guy. He's he's great with the supporters, and he he just fits the bill for for Accrington Stanley. He's, he's a he's a character. He's a nice guy, and he's a family man. He brings his child to the game, and he fits the bill for a Stanley legend. I love watching him play, and he had the uh, the penalty kick the other day, and he said that he doesn't like taking <laughs> too much, though. <laughs> no, he, uh, he, he, can, uh, he knows where the back of the net is, Billy. He, he gets half a chance, he's, it's in normally. Yeah. Tell us about the uh, some of the challenges that you've run into with creating the book and the challenges in compiling 50 years of history together. Okay, so probably... Compiling the book has been quite easy for me because I I do collect all this information, collect it all as time goes on. It's just it's just what I do for some reason. I've I've had all the information. The main problems for the for the book have been basically financing it as a project because it, you know involve a club like Accrington, there's not going to be thousands of people who want it. You know, it's, it's only going to be hundreds. To make we're going to get the word out. We're going to make yep. it so tens of thousands. <laughs> well, maybe. Let's let's go for it. The website that we can get it on is, yeah. is onstanleyon.com, correct? It is onstanleyon.com. And that is the Supporters Club website where you can go on, subscribe to the book. And it gives you different payment options, uh, postage options, depending on where you are in either the UK or the world. Fortunately, I've had, I've had some good help off a lot of people it's been a real team effort it hasn't just been me sat there writing this book a couple of friends of mine have helped with the funding of it uh, a guy called david davis who's a, a real character who drives 100 miles to the to each game to watch us from uh, nottingham an ex-school friend of mine david allen so they've helped with it with the finance i've had Two proofreaders who've helped, which has been an interesting situation. The first straightforward is a guy called Derek Dixon. He compiles all the statistics on the club. So he knows absolutely everything about every player, every match they've played, every goal they've scored. Every, you know, he knows the it's true so size. He, he, <laughs> nothing gets past Derek. Now, the other side of the, the book has been the proofreading of it from a grammar point of view. Now, I've had to rely on a, an ex-teacher of mine in this, a lady called Steph Grimshaw. She actually goes watching Accrington as well. We sit down regularly, go through the book, various chapters, and Steph tells me where my grammar's not being good. We get told off by my teacher, and I'm 49 <laughs> years of age, so <laughs> it's been interesting. But she's been, a, she's been a really good help. Well, that's fantastic. It sounds like you have a great group of people. And the cool thing is that, that everybody that you're working with is someone that really has a passion for the team and, and making sure that, that the project. You, you know, as soon as I saw the book, I uh, I actually went on the website and there wasn't uh, a U.S. option to order it yet. So I, I hassled him and got the U.S. option right. on there. Okay, <laughs> that's good. So, we've, got, we've had a few more since, so thank you for that. Well, awesome. That's what I like to yeah. hear. And, I mean, I just can't wait to get the book. Now, this is a, a bit of a, uh, a silly question that uh, that we ask uh, on this show, but it, it's a bit of a, a debate that, that we have here. And Aaron's not with us today, but, but Aaron always gives me a hard time about my American way of saying Derby County. So we, uh, we need to know uh, what you think is the proper way to say Derby County. Well, <laughs> I'd say Derby. 
Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but you do hear both, both, you know, even in the UK, Phil. <laughs> Damn, yeah, I died. We always have a big debate yeah. about the proper way to say it. He, he says that I sound like a horse race. Uh, an Accrington fact. Where the Crown Ground is, now the Wham Stadium, there's actually a site adjacent to it was a uh, was a famous brickworks. Now, Accrington was famous for bricks uh, back in the day, and they were exported all over the world, these bricks. And some of the bricks ended up as the foundations of the Empire State Building. Oh, I thought that would be quite, it's a quite a strange Accrington-American connection. That is quite interesting. And believe it or not, and this is how deep into the history that I've gone, is I actually had read that. And I, I do know that uh, that Accrington was the known as the finest brick-making town in the world. You also uh, were big at the cotton producing, was yeah. it? Or that? Yeah, and yeah, then yeah, we were, yeah. On your badge, it says industry and prudence conquer yeah. is the uh, the town motto right yeah that's that's the one tell us about the promotion and uh and going up and, and winning the league two last year tell us about that well i was quietly optimistic when the season started that we would be challenging we had had two decent seasons previous well the two years uh prior to that we 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 lost out on the last day of the season. Uh, the year after, we, we did okay. We finished in the top half. And I was quietly optimistic, but I had no idea that we we would win the league. I thought we might be challenging for the playoffs, uh, maybe sneak in a promotion spot. But the way we won the league was absolutely phenomenal, really. We just got on the kind of run where nobody could beat us. An odd goal, and a lot of clean sheets. And, you know, it was, it was, just, it was just a fantastic run after Christmas. We, we made some, uh, John Cole made some good signings, especially Jimmy Dunn at centre-back in, in the January transfer window. And we just never looked back after that. It was, it was unbelievable. Seems like you guys have that knack for making that key signing like Paul Smith that we mentioned earlier. But the real question is, how many days did the party last for? <laughs> Unfortunately, I, had, I I went away on holiday the, the day after, so I, I was in bed for a reasonable time, otherwise I wouldn't have been able to make my holiday. Uh, <laughs> the weather was nice, all the players and the spectators were all having a beer on the side of the pitch. It was it was memorable. It was it was it was a great night. It was just fantastic memories really. Oh yeah, I can only imagine that that something like that must just light up the whole city. It's got to be something where, you know, you, you go to the grocery store and uh, the clerk is smiling at you. Yeah, <laughs> everybody's just, everybody's yeah. just in, in a good mood. Because even in a, a city as big as Phoenix, I, I know that, that when one of our teams is doing well here, then it just it, it changes the whole mood of the city. So I can only imagine it in a place like Accrington where uh, winning a league, us just really put an extra pep in you guys' step. It was, and it, it's just so great to be able to celebrate with the players. It, it, it almost feels like you'd played in the match yourself. It, they're so accessible to you. The the players, you know, they, they come into the bar after the game and the manager and the, the owner and the all, everybody just speaks to everybody else. And I remember Billy Key putting his uh, championship medal around my neck, you know, and we had a photograph and things like that. You just, it, it, you remember it forever, don't you? That's what it's all about right there. And that's the thing that, that like we were talking about earlier, you're never going to experience that following the, the Premier League. And it's just like, no. it's like you said, like, you know, before the, the match, I'll, I'll send Scott a, a tweet and, you know, say good luck. And he'll send it back and say, hey, thanks, Phil. Or, you know, after the match, you know, it, it, and, you know, you're, you're never going to be able to, to connect with, uh, with no. players on that level. You know, if you're you're watching the the Premier League or no. Bundesliga no. or you know any of these. No, I, I mean, if I, if I supported Tottenham Hotspur, I can't imagine sitting down on the the day that we have a, we won the championship and having a, a beer with Harry Kane. You know, it's just a, it's another world, isn't it? So, but you know, we you can sit down and 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 speak to your your favourite players, and it, it's great. 
what I've noticed from TV, at least, is what I see of the Wham Stadium, and it's much like this uh, where, where we go to watch the Phoenix Rising here, is that you're right there on the field where you could actually, you know, reach over the boards and, and shake the players' hands. You're not sitting 40 feet back with armed guards all surrounding the field yeah. like you see on these big games on TV. And you know, After the game gets over, the players will run off the field and give you a high five and yeah uh, that no, kind of thing it. yeah it's, it's exactly the same we even with the some of the opposition players get involved with some banter with the supporters and it's uh, there's some characters around in in those leagues we, there's a guy called uh, kevin ellison who plays for morecambe uh, we're not playing morecambe because we got promoted but normally when he comes He's uh, at an advanced age. I think he's uh, he's just turned forty, Kevin Ellison. Uh, but he's has fantastic banter with the supporters of both teams, you know. And you get you get a lot of that. You're so close to it. You can almost speak to the players and 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 then back. Yeah, it's it's got to be be a lot of fun just to go down there and then, like you said, have have a pint and, and sit back. We've gone over just about everything that, that I had planned to talk to you about today. What what other things did, did you maybe have anything that, that we hadn't talked about yet that you wanted to make sure we got to? No, no. Hopefully there'll be some other times when we can have a chat, you know, as the season develops. and. Yeah, absolutely. And I definitely want to check in with you again a couple more times before the book comes out. Is it June or is it July? I'm sorry. It's July. Uh, July. I'm July. So we're, because we usually have our preseason games, then we'll we'll probably pick a a, a, a decent preseason match against a good opposition and have a, a launch party then. So we haven't nailed down the actual uh, date, but it's around end of June, early July. We'll definitely talk with you again, I, I would say, at least maybe two more times before then, and then hopefully talk to you again right when it comes out. And, and once again, that website is onstanleyon.com, correct? That's correct. And that's the Accrington Stanley Supporters Club website. If you go on there, you can subscribe, but I'd, I'd advise anybody interested in Accrington Stanley to go onto that website anywhere. There's some really interesting pieces on there. I know the guy called Peter Leatham who runs the supporters club, he, he puts a tremendous amount of time and effort into it and it's a very professional site and they put good features on there. So it's well worth a look and hopefully you might want to subscribe to the book while you're on there. Yeah, it is a great site and, and you could also become a member of the Accrington Stanley Supporters Club out there. It's just a fiver. <laughs> yeah, that's it. just a fiver and you can keep in touch with all the, uh, the, the ongoings at the WAM Stadium. Yeah, and I got my uh, Supporters Club card all the way over here in Arizona and my pin and, and everything set over. So uh, yeah. a lot of cool stuff. And if you're on the uh, the Accrington Stanley Supporters site, of course, look for Darren's book and everything else on the website. And we're going to put a link on our website uh, along with this uh, in the show notes here that will take you directly to where you can buy Darren's book from. We'll be looking forward to to talk with you here again shortly thank you again for coming on the show it's been nice to speak to you phil enjoyed it yeah. thank you so much we we really appreciate your time and we will we'll talk to you again here before the book comes out and we wish you lots of luck and and like i said we're gonna try to help you sell ten thousand copies <laughs> thank you very much it's been really nice to speak to you phil thank you <laughs> thank you okay bye, -bye. bye. And that was Darren Woodhead, author of the new book that's coming out, 50 Years of the Crown Ground, 50 Years of Accrington Stanley. Thanks again for coming on the show, Darren. An all-around great guy and very interesting to talk to. He certainly knows his Stanley. Once again, the website that you can order that book at is onstanleyon.com. We hope to talk to Darren a couple more times before the book comes out in July. And with any luck, we may have some Accrington Stanley legends coming on with him. We'll keep you posted on that. And don't forget to stay tuned for our next episode where we will have another very special guest joining us and Aaron and Matt will be back with me. Thanks again.